Hello, God's people. Good morning. I want to welcome you to Rousing the Saints of the Lord, um, episode 10. Um, this morning, it's been some time, I, and like we usually do, I would like to um, um, engage other groups, you know, uh, engage other groups in the uh, in a in our broadcast this morning. So here I go. Um, just a minute before we start out on the message itself. Okay. All right. I guess. Um, okay. Praise God. Um, we have been looking at the message. Um, for a while now about the fact that God God wants to um, bring his people to the place of knowing that they are his they are his battle axes and that they are the ones he fights um, true you know that we are limited we are the one who can limit god uh we are the one who can limit god and um, we are the one who can um stop his working determine how well he works not just not because he cannot do beyond what we want uh how we are how much we allow him but by reason uh, by reason of efficiency or capacity or capability but more of because he has chosen to limit himself by us so uh we are expected you know um we are expected to understand that and then to work with him you know uh, that is what god expects of us to work with him and um, so in order to work with him we must know that he walks with his army. We are the army of the Lord, you know. And as the army of the Lord, um, we need to know how, where, how he has organized his army, so that we can know where we are, where, where we belong, you know, uh, within the army, and all that. So this is very important for us to understand and to know. Uh, okay. I think um, okay. I think we are almost there, so that every every other person on other platforms can just know um, where we. They can always take advantage of the classes of the school or rather <laughs> of the teachings. You know, that's why we're taking time out to uh, make sure that every platform uh, that I have started at least um, gets to uh, hear the message and see the message okay thank you very much everyone God bless you like I said this morning we are on episode 10 you know of rousing the army of the Lord and we began to talk about the positioning of the army and um, that the army of the Lord is positioned uh, please, if you're watching, can you help me just confirm if the audio is good? If the audio is good, let me know. We are the army of the Lord and we're positioned according to his word um, in four different regiments. Four signifies the number of totality. Um, we can see these four regiments of positioning by the face of the cherub. We can see them by the ordering uh, in the book of Numbers in chapter 2. Uh, the cherub will always bear the glory of God. They, uh, they, uh, they are always uh, in charge of throne authority um, when the Lord, when Jehovah goes out of uh, his family to do work, to do things outside of his familiar, if I may use that word, in a, out, okay, let me use it this better this way. After or the outside of the areas where we are most familiar with him. So, as of the areas where we are most familiar with him, that's what, that's how um, the Lord goes forth. He goes forth with the cherub bearing the throne. You can see that in Ezekiel chapter 1, 
um, uh, in Ezekiel chapter one, you see the Lord born, and then you see uh, in the book of in the books of the Lord in several places we are told that it is a priest, four priests representing the cherubs that bear the ark of the covenant, the Lord who dwells among the cherubs in the midst of the cherubs. Now the cherubs are custodians of divine secrets, especially as it relates to the throne. In the last days, where we are now, at the change of the age, we're going to have the manifestations of the work of the cherubs. This is why every believer must understand and know that um, we will need, we will be having angelic engagements uh, at this time. Uh, in this season and at this time, there will be a lot of angelic engagements, you know, coming up for us and all that, you know. Uh, okay. At least so that you guys can see my tie. I have tie today. So uh, this is just covering, just showing only my neck. And uh, let the people see my tie so that they know that I have a beautiful tie on this shirt. That's what I want to show, Jerry. Praise God. Uh -huh. You can see my tie now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So, um, so we need to know that we're going to be having angelic um, uh, interactions in the, in the days in which we are. Angelic interactions are... Um, are very very important. Uh, they are they are significant for us to um, come into the fullness of what God wants us to have in this time. You know the Bible says during the during the age of the law. Let's even look beyond the age of the law. When Abraham was called of God, the age he was having constant angelic interactions to establish to establish the work that the Lord has um, called him to. To establish the activities and the workings of God in that age, when the law age came, you know, you know, from Adam, even Adam had angelic interventions. I can also know that Noah must have had angelic inter interactions because he was a major person in the um, uh, in that age where the Lord was destroying all that was living in the world and saving him alone. So there was no way we would not have had angelic interactions, even though the scriptures do not mention it, because we see that in every other intentionality of God, where the Lord determined to do certain things, there were uh, monumental things relating to the age in which they were, or to establish a new age. God was always doing, um, uh, uh, causing there to be angelic interactions between um, the called one that are supposed to carry the activities of God for the day, and um, and and the spirit realm. Now, when we look at um, Abraham, Abraham had angelic interactions. There was an angel that called to him. He had a voice, Abraham, do not kill the child. The angel of the Lord, that's when he wanted to sacrifice Isaac. Then in, in Genesis chapter 15, the angel of the Lord appeared to Abraham with the Lord himself. Now, they were told to be, uh, the men went ahead, you know, but Abraham stood yet before the Lord in Genesis chapter 15. Um, in this is Genesis, it was not 15, it should be 16 or 17, when the Lord was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. But when we, when they entered into Sodom, when the two men entered into Sodom, they were said to be angels, you know. So, you know, we were going to have angelic interactions. So the time in which we are in is very, very important. Um, we're going to have cherubic interactions. And um, Now, now, when the law was about to be established through the hands of um, Moses, the Lord, there were a lot of, thank you very much, Pastor Sophie, God bless you, thank you very much. Appreciate you. Thanks for coming around again this morning. Now, when the Lord was going to bring the law, the angelic operations were everywhere. Angelic operations were everywhere, you know, between um, Moses and the Lord. The Lord sent them frequently to Moses. In fact, by the time um, Paul was going to give a summary of how the law was received, he said, uh, if the law which was received by the hands of angels, you know, that constitution of the law that was received by the hand of angels, so it was said to have been received by the hands of angels. So angels had um, a lot of activity at that age. Now, uh, when you look at um, the time um, during the law when significant things were to take place, you look at Daniel, you look at, um, that's even within the period of the age of the law. 
you look at the prophets, you look at uh, Samuel, you look at all of these prophets, you see that the angelic was so much in operation with them. Now, when you look at at the time when the age of grace was to be established, even to ordinary Joseph, angels appeared in his dream and said, Fear not, Joseph. Um, do not fear to take your wife to yourself. For the seed, for the child which is in her, you know, and he began to mention what the child was for. So, um, God bless you, Pastor. Thank you very much, Pastor Israel. Thanks so much. Uh, so when the when the when the child was born, said uh, the angels were the one, the, the messengers who were sent to Joseph and even to Mary. And um, when he was born, the book of Luke says the host of heaven were shouting, uh, "Glory to be to God and, uh, and uh, glory to God in the highest and peace on the earth to Him, um, and to for all mankind and all that." So you see. Uh, the, the men that came to give him gold, silver, and frankincense, and, and ma, gold, frankincense, and ma. Uh, but the three things gold, frankincense, and ma. But the three things, and uh, the gold for his kingship, the frankincense um, for his priesthood, the ma for his death. You know. Now, so when they came, uh, the angels also directed them. They just, the, the angel of the Lord visited them in a dream and told them, do not go back the way you came. In other words, don't go back to Herod to tell him where the child is. You know. Um, so, angelic, the angelic will always be in operation. Now, when the age of grace were going to start right away after the death burial and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, when he had given a message to, uh, I mean, he had delivered the covenant, the execution of the covenant to the hands of the saints, of his saints, his apostles and disciples. The angelic also still followed them, it was very rampant in the midst of them. So now this is the end of another age. Even up until Paul and all the rest. And during the age of grace, when they learned about the Lord wanted to do anything fantastic among his people, the angelic was always in operation. The angelic was always in operation. So it's always good for us to know that. So this is another time when the Lord is fulfilling what I would call the third covenant. There's a covenant which is coming to pass, which is the covenant for creation. You know, every creation is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Not just unbelievers. The entire creation, they are groaning. You see, we may not know that the creation is alive. The trees are alive. The animals, the, the rocks, everything is alive. Because when you look at them under the microscope, you see... You see the cells, you see the atoms that keep rolling. Even this is alive. This is my phone covering. It's alive. When you look into the atomic particles that makes the, the littlest parts of this phone cover, they are alive. So they are all, because of the, the increase of sin, the increase of disorderliness. And sin now does not just mean, sin does not just mean, Okay, I did something that God doesn't like. No. Sin means to do something that is against, to miss the mark, to, me, to do something injurious to the divine principle and all that. So, uh, so because of that, the whole creation is groaning. This Bible is groaning. This phone I'm using is groaning. You know, they are not functioning at their best. They are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. For he that subjected them um, into corruption or to vanity, subjected them in hope to the end that um, uh, they will be delivered into the liberty of the sons of God. So that's why our liberty, our coming into fullness, is tantamount to their own liberty. When we get our liberty, they get their liberty. Because Paul said in that Romans chapter 8, he said, it's not only them that grow, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit. So we are the first fruit of the Spirit. The first fruit of the Spirit means the first deposit of the Spirit. That is the Spirit our spirit being born again, being revitalized, being having the life of God. So that's the first fruit. We have the lump sum coming. The lump sum coming is the redemption of our bodies. Now the redemption of our souls has been taking place on a gradual basis for the past 2,000 years. So eventually the redemption of our bodies will come when we come into a measure of fullness. It is the Lord that determines that fullness. It is not us. 
I may say if a woman should reach fullness, she must wear magzi, a, a cloth that will get to the ankle. And other word that will get to the, um, this part of the, uh, you know, this arm, you know, almost to the, the, the palm of the arms to cover her nakedness. That may be my own law. And that's how over the, over the years, over the centuries, many churches have helped, have, have tried to, to prognosticate, to uh, deliberate, to uh, constitute by laws and human laws and thinking um, what they think is perfection. But it is a law, it is about the measure of the stature, the fullness of Christ. It is the fullness of Christ, not the fullness of daily matters. Did you get that? So he is the one that will know when we have ar arrived at the fullness. And then we will also know because the Spirit will bear witness with us that we have come in there. Now, I want you to know that there are people who have come into that place who have not yet gotten into immortality. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's the fifth seal. The fifth seal says that the souls who were dead under the altar were asking God for their immortalization. And then the Lord says, how long, O oh, oh God, only a faithful and true can consider? Check that um, um, uh, Revelation chapter 6, the fifth seal, check it, and, uh, and then even from the first seal to the fifth seal, check it with Zechariah chapter 1. Uh -huh. See, the angel that cried in Zechariah chapter 1, said, how long, O oh Lord, will Jerusalem remain under ruins, and then the, the gates to be destroyed? So, they were asking for the interventions of God concerning that which obviously he has promised and then uh, the, 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 um, the souls under the altar were also crying how long how long O oh Lord holy and true will uh, will you not um, avenge us upon those who dwell on the earth the vengeance is not a, a vengeance of wickedness it's the vengeance of um, their justification that like what Paul said Right now, I have reserved for me. Uh, I'm waiting for the for the uh, crown of life, which the Lord shall give to me, but not only to me, but to those who love is coming in that day. Um, sometimes I see the understandings of these things, these things as a gift uh, of what the Lord has given to me. It's a gift, and uh, if it's a gift, then it can also be given to others because what I say to one, I say to all. Years ago, I had a dream, and I saw that man of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboe. And uh, he was in a building, there was a building he came to, the building was preparing. Uh, I think um, they were working on the building on the inside, but it was like almost also like ready, but the, the gate was obviously not ready. So I saw him, he was wearing an ox bloodish Ankara, uh, the type of cloth that we wear in uh, Africa. I don't know whether other people in other African nations call it Ankara, but it's uh, the print that we wear as uh, Africans. So he was wearing it uh, for his trousers and his shirt, uh, ox bloodish with some pattern on its body. And then he was in a very, in a black jeep. In that black jeep, he was, um, he, he packed the black jeep and it, it appeared, in that dream, it appeared, it appeared that he had always come to that place to check that building so um so he came that day i happened to be there so i saw him come and then he entered into the building and when he entered into the building, all this in a dream i think uh, i was i went to the wait upon the lord that year that should be like five years ago or six years ago i went to wait upon the lord i was fasting and all that so in one of my sleep i slept and i saw this revelation and then the Lord, um, the Lord showed me that he took a hose for, for extending a pipe. You know, these plastic hoses that you can put, plug to your pipe, to your tap, and then the water can run through it to wherever, you need to wet your flowers and all that. Yeah, so that was lying carelessly on the, on the, uh, on the floor. And then... Um, later, he entered in and um, he took that, and then there was one copper wire in his hands, and he was trying to like measure the wall, but his, his measuring was not accurate. So he had gone ahead, 
started from one point of the wall, he had gone ahead to continue to measure, and then I, I took uh, the water hose, and I began to measure the thing better, more accurately. I began to measure it more accurately. Um, as I was measuring it, I was making it better. I mean, the the I was the measure the measure that we, my measurement was more accurate and better. You know, his own was like wobbled and all that. But a lot of people were following him. I was also following him, and a lot of ministers that I would not want to mention who are my own minister f uh, friends and um, seniors were also following him. I was following as he had gone ahead, and I was following. I was measuring more accurately. Then it got to a point where it was almost at the uh, the at the threshold of to enter into the building, to enter into the like the, maybe the sitting room of the building. We were all within the premises, so he was he was trying to measure the wall, but he was measuring was not accurate. So I was remeasuring behind him as he was going. I was remeasuring behind him. I was making it more accurate, and then as then he went into that. Uh, as he was about to go, so he was stooping down to do something, and then we, I was also there. Then he stood up, and then he looked around and he gave me the copper. It was this red copper wire that he was using to measure, and he gave it to me. And then I was wondering, what am I supposed to do with it? And then somebody said there, he said. Uh, don't you know that if he gave it to you, it means that you are supposed to continue the work. Um, you are supposed to continue the work. So that was the dream that I saw, and uh, I saw some ladies. You know, the other th uh, part of the dream was not really very meaningful, you know, and all that. So, and I, I woke up from there. Um, so was because I said that to say that recently um, I've been having a series of understandings that I have not worked for um, and that is the meaning of the dream that the Lord was going to deliver into my hands certain types of understandings of scripture and context um, that I didn't really work for uh, it's not because I studied and all that, but it's a gift, which is a, my call. It's my calling, and it's a gift. And I believe that uh, when people follow what I have to say, and then they follow that understanding, they will arrive at that place of that gifting also. Uh, um, and that I understood what that dream meant to be that the fathers could not do it accurately, but. Uh, I, I was able to, they're, they're handling over to us. <laughs> you know, I, I had a little bit of a pause in my thoughts there. That's why I was slurring. And it was because I had another dream. I had another dream many, uh, some six years ago also. This time, a friend of mine invited me to minister at Ota. Uh, Ota is a place where you have the Covenant University of Bishop David Oedipo. I was there. Um, okay, let me tell you about a little bit about the former dream that I said about Pastor Deboe. In that dream, what that dream meant is that the fathers have done their path, the house has been built, the fence is now being measured. You know, um, in Revelation chapter 11, I think, it said, Rise and measure the city of God. You know, where the, the, the the city which is on the outside do not measure for it has been given to the Gentiles and all that. So um, the, the, the plumb line has been given to our generation. So it's not just to me but to our generation and to as many people that will agree, follow what I'm talking about. So the fathers have done their work but it is not accurate. So God is giving accuracy to us in this generation. I, I believe I'm also a leader in this, uh, I'm not. I'm saying it with all sense of humility, 
not to aggrandize any position to myself but, um, because of what I've seen uh, myself, where I've seen myself functioning and called to function uh, in these seasons. And everybody have their own place, but the place where I have, where I believe God has given me, is to explain the truth of Scripture um, clearly so that people can lock in with that understanding and grow from there. Not so that they can stay in the place of my explanation, they grow from there. Many years ago, I also had, I don't know why I'm sharing this, maybe I need to share it. I don't know whether I'll put the title there to reflect it so that people can go check it up. Many years ago, I also had a revelation. Not many, about six years. I was invited to altar um, at Bishop Udepo's uh, premises there, where he has the church and the university. And I was staying in the hotel, the guest house. That was where my friend put me. And I had a revelation. And I slept and I had a revelation. And I saw Bishop Oedipo with his son, who, had, according to that dream, was going to be the head of that ministry after him. And then I was, his son was sitting, I was standing in front of him, and he was sitting. And then he pointed me to his son and said, Hear this man something like that here this man follow this man this man has the next thing you know that was what i saw and i woke up now in the evening after the meeting had finished that was on uh, sun, saturday morning so sunday morning so in the evening after we had finished the meeting the afternoon but we went i went for a sunday morning meeting with my friend so in the afternoon around four i don't know five at about four, between four and five. Another friend of mine came to visit me at the hotel. That after I finished with my friend, I invited me to, to his church and I was brought back to my hotel room. So my, one of my friends, a female, came to me, a, a lady, came to me, uh, we've been friends from university, and he has a close, a fairly close relationship with the bishop. So she came to me and uh, that's now real life. And then I said, okay, let's stroll around. So we're strolling within the premises. And then um, we got to the Wolf B place. Wolf B. Uh, you know Wolf B, what of Faith Bible Institute. We got to that place and um, we noticed that the, the sentry, they had security guards in that, all the places. The sentry who was there kept doing like, but he was standing at attention. He was making a sign to me and to my friend who was stro gently strolling. I was doing that way. This is real life, this is not a dream. So my friend now looked at him and said, oh, they are saying we should not walk around this area. Probably the, oh, she now looked at her and said, oh, the bishop is coming. Although, uh, obviously, the sentry was trying to tell us that we should move away. The bishop was coming. So we noticed a, 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 a black cap possibly this Mercedes Benz that is a, um, a G wagon. I didn't know what G wagon was then, about six years ago. So, so immediately the bishop came out of the car. We were still at that Wolf B area at Covenant University. Immediately the bishop came out of the car. My friend ran to greet him. And then, and then when she ran to greet him, oh, of course the bishop knew her the way he greeted her. You know, I'd always felt that this uh, our fathers, they have so many people they may not need to recognize individuals so much, you know, but he knew her. So, um, me, I'd run, I'd run, I'd run ahead, I'd run ahead to, when after we had seen the bishop, I felt, ah, let me just move away from there. Um, so, she, she now called me and my friend was with bishop kneeling down. She had stood up now, she now beckoned to me. And Bishop was looking towards me. Bishop was also looking towards me, uh, also. And um, sorry, there was a call that came from a man of God there. So the Bishop was looking towards me and beckoned, beckoned me. So he said, "Oh, my friend, I told you, this is my friend. He was our Bible study secretary in, in school, and um, my friend." Um, um, he eventually married my friend, who were also 
in the fellowship together. The bishop, bishop people cracked the joke. This is not a dream. Say, oh, so Dele Matthews, you know, he, he had, she had told her, uh, she had told him my name. So Dele Matthews, so you were not just looking at the Bible back in those days. You were, you were also, you know, um, you know, um, you were also looking at the girls, at the, at the lady, you know, understand? That my talking about my wife that I married. So uh, when he said that, that Bishop Ridiko said that, um, he now beckoned me more. He put his hand around me, lovely man of God, put his hand around me, and uh, where he was strolling with me. So he said, what are you doing? And I told him, I explained some things. It's, uh, he then we moved on the threshold, threshold of, the, of Wolfby. Um, um, on the church of the Word of a Bible Institute staircase. And when we moved there, um, we was talking as we were going on. So after a while, when we got to the top of that place, just before you would enter into the wolf bee thing, he now held my hand. He said, he said, can you see all that? And I, I told him also that I had served with his ministry in Sokoto, 1992-93. I was a copper attached to the place. I offered to serve the Living Faith Church in Sokoto then. And I told him the pastor under which I served, Pastor Olarewaju, Simon Olarewaju. And um, yeah, of course, he knows him very well. He's his cousin and all that. He has his own ministry now, but his cousin cannot miss that name. So, uh, so he now looked around and said, can you see all these things? You know, the way his eyes are, you know, you know, was looking up and he was moving his head around uh, well, right at his face, you know, he said, can you see all these things? I said, yes, sir. Uh, he said, these are the things we're telling you in those days. Can you see it now? I said, yes, sir. He said, now look at me and say, so whatever God tells you to do, do it. You know, I want to do it like my like his face. So whatever God tells you to do, do it. You know, and I said, thank you very much, sir. So, and then I left that place. So after I left, my friend was telling me that, hmm, do you know that you just had an encounter with the bishop? He said, this man that you just saw now, <laughs> many people come to this place and wait for hours, days, even weeks without meeting him. Who actually came for the purpose of meeting him and just met him like that. Those are sobering experiences. So when I'm teaching, um, it was a, I saw those things as a confirmation of what the Lord had, uh, had, had uh, told me um, to do. That was what, what the Lord had told me to do, um, confirmed by Pastor E. Adeboye in a dream, which I had, and by Bishop Adeboye, both in a dream and in, life, in the real life. And I was not even... I was not, I wasn't intending to see the bishop. In fact, when I even saw him, I'd run away because I didn't, I was not brought up to look for important personas. I believe if you have a walk, your walk will set you before kings, you know. So, um, you don't announce your great work. Great work announce themselves, like Bishop Odepo will say. <laughs> you say, you say anybody that is doing great works, your great works will always announce themselves. <laughs> The great works don't don't get announced; they announce themselves. So I, I I have that, and even from a child, I'm not somebody that goes to meet uh, important personalities like that. So even though I was almost face to face with him, I had run ahead. But he called me back and spoke those words to me. And when he spoke those words to me, I felt like that um, he was giving the baton to our generation. See, when he say he's giving the baton, doesn't mean. The man of God was going to leave the earth or his work was going to collapse. No. It just means that God is recognizing that another generation has arisen. And God is confirming it through his men. You understand? Um, God is confirming the work through his men. God does not go through, uh, go, go beyond established. Um, God does not go beyond uh, his established orders. He goes through them. God recognizes authority. That's why even parental authority, whether your parents are 
Ogun worshippers or Islamic people, you should honor your parents. God is all is a stickler for order and for authority. So I believe that for my generation, we are supposed to present the truth of God more accurately. And that is why we teach all these things, you know. Some of you may wonder, I teach sometimes, maybe just one person that is watching part time or two people. But I just leave it out there because I believe that it is mine to obey what God says. Whether it is one person that is listening or half person, whether the person is half awake, half asleep, one day somebody will need all these teachings and will look for it. And sometimes they may not even be looking for it. They will just type a name that will look like my name. And then the, the internet will open them up to the messages I have given. So these are the ways uh, of God. These are the true sayings of God and the ways of God that God uses from um, generation to generation. He raises his leaders. Uh, I believe one, I'm one of the leaders that he has raised now uh, in this season to acquaint the saints with his work in this time. It was all, like I said, <laughs> sometimes I'm keen to call it the Third Testament, but it's not, it's not really a Third Testament, but it is the fulfillment of the New Testament. Um, you know, because God cares so much. He said the creations are waiting. The creation, though, the entire creation, your car, everything that is from the earth or from this universe, they are waiting for the, to be delivered into the liberty of the sons of God. So, and, um, you know, I, I, this scripture has been coming to mind for a long time, um, for about two, two weeks now. Okay. All right, somebody wants to join my message or something. Okay, all right. Maybe uh, so Facebook is giving me some uh, notifications, and I don't know what it means. Uh, okay. Now, so this scripture is in the book of uh, Revelation. It says, Thou art worthy, O Lord. Um, uh, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, for thou hast taken thy great power and have begun to reign. For uh, let me sing it as a song um, that I know very well. Uh, we give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty. Um, you know, I'm, I don't know why I'm forgetting that scripture. Uh, but where I want to go in that scripture, it says that, uh, for you have begun to reign, for the time has come, okay, to judge the dead and to reward your servants, the prophets. He said, the nations were angry, for thy wrath has come. For the time has come, to, to, to uh, judge the dead and to reward your servants, the prophets, and your saints, and those who reverence your name, and to destroy those who destroy the earth. Did you see that? So, even this earth, what people are doing to the earth is going to be reward, it's going to be uh, punished. The evil that people are doing to the earth is going to be punished to destroy those who destroy the earth, not even the world now, the earth, the real estate, the waters, the, you know. <clears throat> To destroy those who destroy the earth. So it means that God wants the universe to be at rest. And everything has been paid for by the redemption of Jesus Christ. You see, but they will now, the, he has redeemed us to redeem others and to have our minds, you know, filled with his, his word uh, uh, so that we can be renewed. And then so that when we come into our own inheritance, which is the fullness of Christ, when we come to the Sabbath, then we cannot give a Sabbath to the earth and to every creation. So what that scripture says in Romans chapter 8 is for the earnest expectation of creation awaits the manifestation of the sons of God. All creation is waiting and it is time so <clears throat> for us to show up. Now let me show you this. Let me show you this. At this time, the angelic is going to be very, very, very frequent. I saw a revelation in my hotel room, um, I think last, uh, last time I was in Lagos. I saw another one before this last, I think that was in 2019, but let me talk about this last one. I saw a big man, giant, big, standing behind me in my hotel room, and I knew that it was an, it was an angel. And for some of us, archangels will follow. Some of us, the cherubic will follow. But 
you understand that it is everything is the operation of the order of the cherub because we are going in for the throne life. We are approaching Benjamin. And then for the throne life, the guardians of the throne life of immortality are the cherubs. They are the ones set to guard the way to the east. Um, where, um, which is the way to the tree of life. Praise God. So, um, the Lord will grant us great grace so that we can take advantage of all of these things. But please, if um, the Lord has joined us together, then we should, in one way or the other, I mean, through one way or the other, we should listen. We should uh, um, follow some of these teachings. And um, I don't know what can be there for you. There will be a light that will light millions of people ahead of you. Sometimes, we don't even need to acknowledge where the knowledge and the understanding came from. Yes, if we acknowledge it, it makes it more permanent. It makes it more... It makes it more authentic. It makes it more authentic. Uh, but at the same time, um, we should follow these things, these teachings, and know that we have a great thing in our hands. Um, you know, and then the Lord will, will, will increase us in the knowledge of Him and cause us to come into where He has a portion for us. Now, for every one of us that are in the army of the Lord, we are in that on the face uh, of, the, uh, of the lion, on the face of the uh, of the ox, the face of man, or under the regiment of the face of the flying eagle. And uh, like I said, we're going to be continuing to share about that uh, very, very soon. We haven't begun to share, but I just felt like I had to share some of the things I shared this morning with us. We have begun to share it since on uh, Thursday when I left, no, on uh, I think Wednesday and Thursday, I just made a little, a little mention of it on um, Thursday last week. That was when I traveled to Lagos from Abuja, where I'm based, and I went to minister at uh, a sister ministry, and I came back, and this is what we have this morning. So uh, there's, there are going to be great releases that will lead us to the throne life in the last days. This is what this, all these are about, the throne life. The authorization to rule the nations, yeah, the authorization, the authority to rule the nations, is going to be made more manifest uh, through the secret, as the secrets of God are unlocked through angelic ministrations, and the Lord will increase you uh, in the knowledge of Him and bless you mightily. Thank you uh, for all those who joined us for the broadcast this morning. God bless you. We'll continue again tomorrow by the grace of God. God bless you. Really, really. And I ask us to pray. Heavenly Father, according to your word, let there be uh, a more pervasive encounters with an your, the angelic, with the operation of the cherubic, as we come into the end of days, where we open into the covenant with, God, with the creation, where all creation will be in, in sync with the Almighty God, redeemed by our liberty, by coming to the liberty of we, the sons of God. Can we just take a time to pray about that? Make us shun tati by blame you, she sent to turn that this is this is in KK Kukana Baba Baba Banto. Praying then they do so 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 to tala baba baba. And KK and you should turn that papa for Frankie de Kushinto. My prayer can also so that papa Frankie de Kushin today. My turn to Sazan Parant to so that papa for Kushin today. The plan to so so papa for Frankie de Kushin today. Zanon to turn so 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 salaba. Thank you, Jesus. We give you praise. We exalt and lift you In Jesus' name, my hand could tumble and pronto and if we should have to the men of God, to the people of God who hunger and test after righteousness sake. That they might be filled, yes, O Lord. Angelic encounters. Maton to pray, and do so soon to pray. Pembe, do so to pray, and do so soon to pray. Pembe, do so to pray, and do so soon to pray. Pembe, do so to pray, and do so soon to pray. Pembe, do so to pray, and do so soon to pray.
I pray for you in the name of Jesus that may the revelations of God, the understandings of God that is able to make you to partake of divine experiences and divine encounters, may they be released to you in the name of Jesus. May the workings of God through you in the last days be delivered into your hand actively, not just by knowing, but by doing in the name of Jesus Christ. It will become a revelation that stirs you to activity, that brings you to action in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for those who hunger and thirst, those who are saying there must be more to this. Those who are having an inquest in their heart, that Lord send your angels, let the cherubic uh, 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 operations of the last days meet with these people. Lord, let them, let them open their eyes to the things you're doing and to the workings of the Almighty in the last days. <coughs> in the name of Jesus, we pray for our church leaders. We pray for the gates men set over moves, over moves of God, over the churches, over Bible schools, that they will understand, they will come into the understanding of the workings of God in the days, in these days and time. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the door be open. Let the door of revelation be granted to them. In the name of Jesus, so that they will know and so that they can accurately discern the words of the Lord for this season that we're in. In the name of Jesus, praise the Lord. I appreciate you, God's people. God bless you so much. Appreciate you. Thank you. We'll meet again tomorrow. God bless you. Bye bye.